Um, <laughs> no, I mean, and it was really cool. Um, Boba Fett walked you down the aisle, Hal? Uh, yeah. Um, what What had happened was um, when we were planning the wedding, we, we didn't invite family and friends because we didn't want that sort of stress. We just wanted to celebrate this day for us. And um, we thought, well, why don't we invite the 501 from Orlando? Because we were married at the Hard Rock Hotel. The video is up on our website, and it's also on my web comic on the, on the front page. Um, and so when we contacted the 501, 501st, it seemed that the guy in charge knew who Jim was. I mean, his name was Dark Claw. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was his screen name. I don't think his mom named him that. Um, <laughs> You'd be surprised nowadays. <laughs> uh, well, I think he, he was a bit older. So. <laughs> So we were just hoping to get, what, three or four stormtroopers, and then they offered us 50. Wow. And we're like, whoa! And the first was no clones. Thank um, God. They had to be from the original Star Wars trilogy. Um, and then they said, uh, well, we have a Boba Fett. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and they said there's a guy that has a working R2-D2. I was, I was like, Oh my God! I wanted to ask you about that. How did you guys score that? Because because uh, R two D two was a full functioning R two uh, as the ring bearer. Yes, yes, he was <laughs> the ring bearer. How did how did you guys score that? He was part of the five hundred first, and um, he was on the forum. And I wrote him a letter and wrote the word please about eighty times. <laughs> and um, it, it just all worked out. I'm telling you, the universe just said yes. You guys need to have a Star Wars wedding. <laughs> I, I'm I'm I am just in so much awe and envious of the whole thing because I said it earlier. It is the fanboy dream come true. It really is amazing. <laughs> but I'm <And> a fan girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> it's everything that you know. Kids growing up in that generation have dr have dreamt for, and you guys got to live it. I, I mean, I, I'm really envious and in awe. Well, I don't see why you can't. Too, well, you know, you know. <laughs> I went out on a comic date with Ken, but I, I'm not ready to, for that kind of commitment. <laughs> yeah, well, unless I get to be Darth Vader, but I'm okay with that. I will fight you for that, and it will definitely be a rock paper scissors contest. Right. Boys, boys, boys! It would can... make a lovely Padma. <laughs> no, 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 purism, Holly, purism. There is no prequels okay. here. <laughs> Well, it depends. Can't we let Natalie Portman in, <laughs> please? You're like, I mean, I like all the chicks of Star Wars. You know, well, that, there I'm forgiving. Well, uh, well, Frank, Frank, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. Mm -hmm. If Holly is willing to lend me her bikini for a week, I'll do it. <laughs> I've seen the pictures. You're nowhere near as voluptuous. <laughs> I can give you the name of a good tailor. All right. All right. That'll work. That'll do. We, we were actually talking about your, your guys' process, and um, one of the other things that I did want to bring up, um, Holly does the coloring for, for tarot, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I want to know how you guys, you know, if you get up in the, in the morning and you're working on the book and you're cranking the story out and the, and the pencils and the inks and the coloring, um, which takes up a monumental part of your time, Holly, you actually do a web series on the side, too. Yes, yes. I, um, I have a web comic called School Bites. And it's sort of like Harry Potter with bangs. <laughs> Believe it or not, I went to a British school, so um, I related a lot to Harry Potter in that sense. And I love vampires ever since I was a little girl, so I sort of, you know. I've been working in the vampire genre for about 15 years. My first uh, creator project was Vampire. Which was a great, and, uh, a great title back in the day, too. Yeah, thanks. And then uh, I had just gotten off working for Archie, and I wanted to have fun and do my own thing. So I started um, School Bites back in 2004, and I published uh, two mangas that were shipped direct, uh, and then one that we sell from the, the, um, the, the store, the web store. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I was invited by uh, Giselle, who does a webcomic called Menage à Toi, and she asked me to do a fill-in, and she was just so sweet and encouraged me to, to do a webcomic and uh, taught me the ropes, helped me with my HTML, and so I've been putting up my, um, my manga, and I've also I've been trying to crank out like uh, the fourth volume, so when that comes time to be put up, there'll be something. Okay. And uh, so any any moment I can steal away, I'm you know scribbling in the corner and getting it ready. Oh, because I was gonna say like, how do you find all the time to actually get all the work done? Um, I I think it's because 
like Jim said, I mean, we really wake up like craving to create. And uh, uh, we don't leave the studio a lot unless we're going to a convention or Disney right. um, or a movie. It's like, you know, the reason we've been put on Earth is to tell stories. So we're gonna. And we'll, <laughs> we'll find a way to get it all done. Sometime back, Jim and Holly, I became a fan of a miniseries that you had done of uh, the, the uh, Kittens title. Yeah. And I know that they um, had showed up in Tarot also later on. But my question is, when are we going to see see their series again? Uh, well, it goes back to your time question. Right. It, it really comes down to that. I do have stories written for them that are just adventures for the three little kittens. Um, the reason they appear in tarot is because uh, we do get lots of letters that say, I want to see the three little kittens again. And I know that I just can't break away from tarot at this point to sort of do a mini series of the three little kittens. So... I, I sort of interject them into the storyline of Tarot. Um, I would like to do another miniseries uh, of the Three Little Kittens on their own, and I, you know, I, I probably will, but not this year. I do have to ask, who were some of your inspirations, uh, artist-wise, growing up when you were reading comics that actually uh, wanted you to get into the business? Uh, I, I definitely have to say uh, Frank Thorne. Uh, Frank Thorne, who drew uh, Red Sonia back in the, the 70s, I believe. Uh, when I saw his work, I, I, I was blown away by it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, you know, as a kid at five years old, you know, I grew up with the Adam West on TV and, and the cartoon, uh, the Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, they became my first influences. And, and then when I grew up, uh, you know, I started looking at other artists and would basically pick up Frank... Uh, uh, Frank Thorne's work. What about you, Hal? Oh, it's so weird because um, Frank Thorne was my hero, and I love Red Sonia so much because I kind of, my body developed that way when I was 16, 15, really, and, but my brain was like, you know, into Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and all that. I, I, I didn't want to date boys. I just wanted to draw and play Dungeons and Dragons. And so I really related to Red Sonia because, you know, she didn't want the boys around her. She would kick their butts, you know. Why weren't there more women like you around when I was growing up? I don't know. <laughs> you should have gone to school in Manhattan. <laughs> But, um, so, and then I, I picked up uh, the Warren Vampirella. I love Jose Gonzalez. And uh, Frank Frazetta is both, a, you know, a hero for both of us. Frazetta is um, just amazing. Yeah. And I also love Froud. I mean, I, lo I was, uh, you know, inspired by uh, art that was not comic book art as well. Oh, and I, I read Howard the Duck. I, I love that. But... <laughs> Brian Froud, amazing. I mean, especially like... He, I mean, he's done a lot of the the, uh, the fantasy uh, art, but also most known for uh, doing the production uh, sketches and, and layouts for uh, Labyrinth and, and the uh, Dark Crystal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you know that Wendy Froud designed Yoda? Yes, I did actually. Uh, I did not know that. That's awesome. Yep. That makes perfect and sense. She told me herself. Well, now now I'm in. Not all. read that on the web. <laughs> Well, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of this Star Wars talk. We brought up the wedding and everything. I mean, I, I'm saying we cut to the chase and, and actually test your knowledge of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> this is where I choke. Uh, <laughs> I won't get into that because I, I heard you may have choked in the past. I did. I did. I, I, uh, we went to Star Wars weekend um, at Disney's uh, Hol Hol uh, Hollywood Studios. It was MGM back then. And at that time, they had an adult trivia contest. And I was studying. Uh, Jim and I would be testing me for two weeks, and I knew my stuff. And I got up there, and I made it all the way to the last round, and I choked. Oh. I knew it, and I choked. All right, I got to ask, do you remember what the question is or was? Yes, I do remember the question. Oh, uh, and, so, and that's got to live with you every, every yes, night? Yes, every night for as long as I live. And, I mean, I was, you know, 14 years, 13 years old watching Star Wars, I would say, three to four times a day, every day for a summer. And I knew that dialogue backwards and forwards, and that's what they quizzed me on, and I joked. You, ha you have to go to bed every night. 
knowing that now? I mean, that has yeah, to be rough. I, I didn't like the prize, though. At least <laughs> it was a crappy prize, and I didn't feel bad. It was a kiss from Warwick Davis, wasn't it? No! Yeah, she said crappy. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's very nice, but, you know. No, no, I don't know. Some toys that I already owned and a lightsaber, which I already have, so. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that, the, isn't that no, always the no, way it works? I, I just wanted to win just for the win. 